Hello again and welcome to Ndu Dubai Fafa. Thank you again for joining me. My name is Fafa Gilbert and welcome to my cookery channel in Dubai Fafa. So today I'm actually going to be talking about how to actually make the best both loads both roads to bear that that name my uh, dodgy kickings. <laughs> Bring yeah, as is known in most francophone states and um, puff puff in Nigeria. Now there are some basic principles that one needs to follow when actually making their both loads of puff puff um, or donuts in this instance. First of all is the temperature of the oil. Secondly is how long you leave your mixture to actually rise. And thirdly as well as the type of ingredients that you actually use to actually get that perfect um, donuts that you do require. Now this recipe was actually made, um, I'd say um, I woke up one day and I just wanted to have donuts and I didn't have the time so I mixed everything together and it was quick actually. And so yes I'll be discussing that as I go along so do stay tuned. To a mixing bowl, add a teaspoonful of salt and then proceed to add 225 grams of plain flour. You can use your old purpose flour, that's not a problem. Once you've done that, now add three tablespoonful of sugar. You can reduce the amount of sugar to your preference and equally increase it as well to your preference. And after that, I'm actually going to add half a teaspoonful of grated nutmeg. You can also use maize um, for that. Add about seven grams of dry yeast, or you can use a tablespoonful of dry yeast and mix all your dry ingredients together till it's well combined. At this point, I'm actually going to be adding my warm water. Now, when I say warm water, it should be lukewarm that you can actually dip your finger in and it won't burn, but warm enough. If it's too hot, it would actually kill the yeast. So I'm actually going to be adding about um, 100 milliliters of water to this mixture. And what I'm actually doing here now is mixing everything together till it's well combined, but also aerating um, the mixture. So I'm making the mixture light and also activating the gluten so it's nice and soft. Now to actually give that mixture that softness and moisture in the middle as well, I'm adding some melted butter. Now this is optional. You can use um, a beaten egg if you um, if you prefer, um, but I'm actually using my melted butter and I've only got about 30 grams of melted butter that I've added to the mixture. Yet again, mix everything till it's well combined and as you can see, it's nice and silky smooth and that's just activating the gluten just beautifully. At this point, it's all done, yeah. And I'm just gonna be covering it with my cling film and I'm going to leave this to actually rise. Now what I've done is actually warmed my oven up. I've opened the door to it, as I always do, and which is actually quite warm, and then just left my mixture there for it to actually double up in size. That took about 45 minutes to an hour. Now if you actually leave this for too long, it actually starts to ferment. And that's when you start frying it, it actually absorbs the oil. So yes, that's number one issue. Now, once you've got that desired texture, which you can see here, it's about how you roll it. So what I'm actually doing is just teasing the dough and then I squeeze it in between my thumb there, as you can see, and you get the perfect shape. So this is the practice. So before you do it, you can practice this a few times and you know, you just get that perfect round ball. And here we go. So now with the oil, I've placed on a medium heat um, for about five minutes, so it's the right temperature. And to just test that your temperature is perfect, what I would suggest is to fry your first ball. And once you drop it, it should actually rise to the top immediately. That's when you know the oil is ready and you're perfect now, you're ready to go. Now, I would count about five seconds in terms of, you know, the um the quantity of dough that you actually fry at a time so i roll it of course it's a messy job because it's a wet one and it's one two three four five and it should just drop in the oil so it means that you're maintaining the quantity as well and the shape of it so yeah here we go you're actually in business now 
So for the oil, I've actually used vegetable oil, um, which actually has no smell or scent. So that's perfect for it. Secondly, it's important that you don't actually overcrowd the pot with the donuts because if you add too much, it actually reduces the temperature of the oil. And when that actually happens, it means that the donuts would absorb the oil. So it's imperative that you do not overload your saucepan or your frying pan or whichever pan that you're actually using with the donuts. So fry it in a batch that, you know, it, it would be easy for you to maneuver. The next problem as well is when you do include milk into your mixture, it makes your mixture burn quickly. So that's where you might think that it's cooked and you take it out, then you actually have an undercooked donut. So on the surface, it actually looks okay. And when you open it, it's actually wet and it's just horrible. Because the uh, mixture already has sugar, it actually allows it to brown. So hence, when you use the sugar, I prefer to use water instead. And of course, I've actually used uh, melted butter as well, so I do get that richness anyway. So at this point, you fry your um, donut. Obviously, it's been frying for a while. Um, it takes about seven minutes, uh, but you need to keep turning it because one side becomes heavy and the other side becomes lighter. So it doesn't really like to roll. <laughs> so you need to be rolling that. And yes, you actually end up with your perfect donut bow float puff puff being here. And look at this. <laughs> your donut is actually ready when it's perfectly brown as you can see here this is just beautiful this is ready so i'm just placing it on the kitchen um paper napkin just to absorb any excess oil and it's time to actually reveal this look at this it's not filled with any oil but those beautiful bubbles just showing there that is it and this is served with some Hausa Coco Bikra. I just say, Medea Mindiago. I do have the Hausa Coco recipe actually in one of my previous videos, but I've also yet again improved upon that recipe. So I'll be putting another um, video out for the Hausa Coco real soon. So do keep in touch or do ensure that you've subscribed if you haven't subscribed yet. Now I'm actually going to be leaving the recipe, including the list of ingredients and measurements on my blog in Dubai for five dots blogspot.com so do check it out now as i said if you haven't subscribed yet you need to subscribe i'm also on facebook and instagram and twitter as indu dubai for five do pass by and say hi until next time do take care of you be nice be lovely be beautiful i love you